Hello, screen actors. I've got an exciting show for you today. There are some things that you just won't learn in many acting classes. And in some acting classes, you actually learn stuff that, well, doesn't serve you that well. Today, you're going to learn about auditioning, but you're going to learn this from an actor who is an ace at auditioning. He has 161 on-screen credits. He gets more roles than he doesn't. And he's a bit of a rebel. I think you're going to enjoy listening to him. I'm going to warn you, if you don't have a lot of experience, some of the stuff he does is out of the box and may not work for everybody. But on the whole, he has a lot of great stuff to share. And it's from the real world, guys. His name is Tony Napo, a good friend of mine. I worked with him on camera and he is going to talk to you about auditioning. And you're going to know when you hear him that he's coming from his heart and from his experience, not from his concepts. OK, if this is your first time here, make sure to click subscribe. And give the channel a thumbs up. And now, without any further ado, Tony Napo. LDB. Hey, Tony Napo. LDB my, in the house. My dear friend, Tony Napo in the house. Thank yeah. you so much for your time here today. My pleasure, sir. Um, you're a joy to work with. and We worked together on my very first TV gig. What which was, was an episode was of a show reminded? called The Secret Service. Wow. And uh, I don't remember much about it, but it was, uh, it was a long, long time ago. Long time. We don't want to go there. How, how long ago it was? <laughs> no, you were a baby. <laughs> wow. I was a young man, you were a baby. If I was a baby, you were an embryo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I got around a lot. <laughs> you know, it's really great. You're, you're starting to get a lot more work, the work that you deserve because of your commitment to the profession and your talent. Can Thank you. Share with the, you know, our listeners, our viewers, like some of the projects you've been working on in the past year or so. Um, well, I did a I did a film in Italy called uh, From the Vine. Uh, we shot. Uh, Sean Cisterna directed it. Joey Pants is the lead. A, a great Canadian cast. Um, um, I'm, I'm on a show right now called Lady Dicks. Um, I'm about to be a regular on a show, which I don't, I don't think I'm allowed to say anything about because it hasn't been announced yet. But it's the first time in 30 years I've recurred on a lot of shows. I was in Bad Blood. I was in Remedy. I was in This Is Wonderland. I was in you know, uh, to lesser extent, killed joys, and um, and I'm recurring on. I, I've recurred on a lot of stuff, but uh, but I've never been a regular. I've never been a series regular, and that's a, that's a exciting. As I as I'm rounding the 30 year mark in this industry, wow. uh, that's pretty pretty exciting. But things people would know me from over the years, the big films are. Uh, Murder at 1600 with Wesley Snipes, Four Brothers with Mark Wahlberg, Saw 2, part of the Saw franchise, Land of the Dead, George Romero directed. Um, I have a cartoon called Forget About It, which uh, I believe played on Hulu in the States, or maybe still plays on Hulu. And, uh, and I've worked quite a bit on stage as well. So I've done on TV, film, stage, movies. Fantastic. Yeah. Now in Saw 2, did you die? I got my head blown off, yeah. But I was still in Saw 3 and 4. <laughs> Go figure. That's imagination. Yeah, and they're like, he doesn't need his head. Who needs a head? So, one of the reasons I definitely wanted to have you talk to my, uh, my people here yeah, is yeah. that you have a really good track record when you audition. Yep. And I think that there's a lot of confusion around the training that people get for the do's and don'ts of auditioning. So if you were to say, what is, what is your biggest asset when you audition that helps you to get a lot of roles? Well, I, I, I teach an audition class. Uh, one of the first things I tell my students is that auditioning is your job. 
you know, I don't look of it. At, I don't look at an audition as a means to getting a job. I show up and do the work, and I do the work. And by doing the work, I mean try and bring an authentic uh, truth, a truth to what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, I mean, David Bamet says there's two kinds of acting: true and false. <laughs> You know, if you believe me, I've done my job. Okay. A lot of people worry. I mean, and, and in fairness to women, it is a legitimate concern for them often about how they dress and what they look like and their skin and so on and so forth. But uh, I just show up. You know, I don't. I don't play a lot of handsome guys. <laughs> so I just show up and uh, and just try to bring the truth and and try to bring. Uh, uh, you know, try to serve the scene, and 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 you know, I, I, I'm not afraid to change stuff in the scene to make it work. You know. Okay, talk about that. Change what, for instance? If a line doesn't work for me, I'll make. Uh, I'll think of a better line. If uh, if I can, if I can think of a button at the end of it to make it funny, I'll change that. If uh, I'll change anything I want to make it work, because you know they haven't shot it yet. It's it's only the present draft of the script. Uh, sometimes they probably book me and use my lines anyway, uh, or don't book me and use my lines anyway. But I'm so glad you're sharing this because yep. I hear so many teachers and even casting directors tell beginning actors, don't ever change a line. No, I, and you don't ask for permission to do it. Never. You just do it. Never. And you know they, if they've seen this, think about it just from a practical standpoint. If they've seen the same audition ten times. And then you're the eleventh one. They're already tired of hearing that, <laughs> you know. So, not only may it serve the scene better, but it but it breaks the monotony of them watching it. So, that's going to make you stand out s subconsciously in in a way too uh, when they're when they're coming down to their selections. But I don't get the feeling that you would change something just for the sake of changing it. No, no, no. no. Only only if I feel you know. Often writers will write their idea of a tough guy or their idea yeah. of a father or their idea of a blue collar person and then write something that's really kind of pat or generic non-specific uh, it's like a line they heard in another movie where another guy was was portrayed like this and and it just doesn't ring true to me and mm -hmm. I'll and I'll you know it's not often it's sometimes not even a line it's just a little thing or phrase or or if it's a, supposed to be funny you know and it's supposed to be a, a tough guy coming in and saying uh, you know this uh, you know this this burger tastes like tastes like uh, it fell off a truck it's like you know that's not so great so I'll uh, I'll say uh, this burger tastes like something my grandmother shit out you know just because that's how a foul rough blue collar truck driver would probably talk <laughs> You know, he's not going to talk for a PG-13 audience. And then if you, they book you, and then they, you know, they might just book you and then say, yeah, but don't say that. You know, like, I don't give a shit what I say as long as you pay me. Now, this is a good segue into that <coughs> question, because I've spoken to you, and I know that you've often said that one of the things that helps you is you always go in with tremendous confidence. Always. Now, what is the source of that confidence? I, I don't think I don't think I had it in the beginning. <clears throat> I think uh, I think you earn that confidence like over time. I know I know going in for certain types of roles. You know I know who the talent pool is that I'm that I'm reading against primarily, and I know like oh this is this is one I'm probably going to get. Uh, oh this one might be one Louis gets, or this one might be one you know Joey gets, or whatever. Because I know all the actors and their strengths and their looks, and I respect them all. Right. Um, but that doesn't stop me from going in. You know, I, I tell, again, I'm talking to my students, I say, uh, most of the time they don't know what they want. They don't know what they want. They have an idea, a general idea of what they want. But they're not waiting, you know, they want you to be good. They're not judging you. They're praying, God, let this be the guy so we can cast this role and get on with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I just go in and and you know I try to show them this is what you want. I'm the fucking guy. You know nice. if you if you're if you're foolish you won't cast me. <laughs> you know and I'll and I, and sometimes I might even if we get into conversation 
I'll play like that uber confident guy. And and it works in and it works often, but it, it specifically works with Americans. And it specifically works on bigger profile projects because they'll come into an audition and say like, "Oh, that guy's pretty good, but is he going to shit his pants when he's doing a scene with Robert De Niro?" You know, or is or or is he going to is he going to just be a fan? He's going to be nervous. Like you, we want somebody to walk in here and show up and know you know, I didn't win a contest. I'm here because I earned this spot and we're going to work together. You know, I'm not I'm not just a I'm not just a dummy for you to So what I'm hearing from you is that you come in and you own your audition. I own my audition every time. Yeah. Own my audition every time. And that and that doesn't mean you have to be a jerk or mm -hmm. rude about it. Mm -hmm. But you know, can you please can you please stand there for me? Uh, I'm I'm going to I'm going to sit here. I'd rather sit for this. Um that kind of thing. Uh, one time I had a reader who was doing a little voice because they were playing my daughter. And I was like, you know what, just, just, just using your own voice. Like, you don't look like my daughter. <laughs> don't pretend, you don't have to try to sound like my daughter. Um, so you can control all those things, all those elements. Uh, but, the, but the biggest thing to control is to prepare, to know the text as well as you can. And and know why you know know the scene know why you're saying it know what you want, and then just do your fucking job. Just the other do your thing job. I'm getting that's really strong is that you don't ask for permission. You know what you um, you're giving yourself permission to do what you feel. Yeah, I never ask for. Per, I don't. I don't ask permission for anything ever, even on set. Uh, the, the script supervisor, the person who's holding the script, will often come over and say, uh, this line is supposed to be, and I'll be like, just change it. Just change because that's what I'm going to say. Unless somebody really has an issue with it, uh, and they'll tell me. If somebody really has an issue, they'll say, well, we really need you to say this. And I'll say, okay, I'll say it. But I'll make sure in the first takes, they're going to get my my version of it. And then if they don't use it, they don't use it. It's their film. Fantastic. Yeah. So, you get a call for an audition, mm -hmm. and you're auditioning the next day. Give us a rundown of your specific preparation. I, I don't prepare a lot. You know, that's, I think that's the key. Or the key for me. That might not work for a lot of people. But I like to, I like to, I like to go through each beat. I break it down into beats. And I and I break it into into what are called action active verbs or action verbs, which means for every beat I have an action. Uh, so if if you were if it was a scene where you were coming to my d door and I open the door, uh, I I I greet you, I acknowledge you, I welcome you, I could possibly reject you, I dismiss you, I you know there's a hundred. I sat down with a director one time who wanted me to explain this to him. And I said, the word hello is a line in a script. You can do that line a thousand ways. Uh, you just have to change that verb. I, I assassinate you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kiss your feet. I worship you. I, I seduce you. You know, these are... Fantastic. So the, that action verb... And it can, it can be that specific. I mean, I don't literally assassinate you, no, but, you but if I want to kill you, and I open that door, and there's you, hello. Yeah, there it is. You know, that's it. That's that's general to specific. You give that line to a non-actor, and they're going to go, hello. Right. Hello. Hello. You know, who is that person to you? What have they done to you? What have they not done to you? What do you want from them? You consider all those factors. So, So I let myself imagine the scene as as I believe the intention uh, I try to uh, I try to decipher what the intention of the writer is in the scene and then from the inside of the scene choose my actions for every beat and then um, and then get familiar with the words so you don't memorize the lines strictly not no no not really I, I, I drill them here's here's the difference uh, I would say I don't memorize them because you, then you get hung up on them. And if you forget a word, it can throw you. 
But when you get to the audition, do you have your size with you? No, no. I would say them, but I know them well enough to say them. Okay. okay. Because sometimes if you memorize each each word, I mean, it's we're talking about memorization versus learning. Mm -hmm. If you memorize the words, you're going to want to say them per uh, what's what? How do you say that again? Uh, verbatim, verbatim, in order, yeah, and, and if you and and, and then you might get stuck on a word, and and then it just throws you. I'm just going to play through, no matter what I do, and 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 also I, one of the things I don't make a point of memorizing. Memorizing, is how I'm going to say them, you know, because that's I think something that actors get stuck into. Um, if the line is uh, "Give me, give me a glass of water," so give me a glass of water. Okay, can you do it again? But but can you be uh, could can you be uh, you know uh, uh, more demanding? Give me a glass of water. Can you be more polite? Uh, could, would you mind please getting me a glass of water? But but if you but if, but when I was young, I would learn get me a glass of water, and then they say, can you try it another way? And I go, get me a glass of water, <laughs> you know? Because that's how I practiced it. I practiced it 150,000 times. Yeah, 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 I get you. But really, it's like, it's not that important. What's, what's important is the, is the action uh, I, I request, or I, or I, uh, 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 I really, that's good enough. It's a that's not a, native dismiss. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, insult? Yeah, whatever. yeah. Yeah, insult would be a good one for that. <laughs> Give me a glass of water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give me a glass of water. Go get your shine. What glass. are you sitting there for? Give me a glass of water. And you know, and I might throw that kind of thing in too. You know, if if you do see that opportunity, I'm going to insult you with that line. Mm -hmm. Then you put a little put a little relish yeah. on it. Give me a glass of water, you mook. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah, go get your shine box. That's right. Yeah. That's and right. And the guy dies because he said it like that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, so so uh, that, and then just show up. I mean, I guess the last stage of the the process isn't preparation, but when you show up, just be open to anything. Uh -huh. You know, I know the scene, I know who I am, I know what I want. Now let's just see what happens. The exact same way I show up to set. That's fantastic because it has you're leaving open discovery. Which means you can be spontaneous, yeah. which will make your performance interesting. Yeah, well, because well, when you show up, I mean, the audition versus set is different. On, on set, you own your own part of it, but it is collaborative. Yeah, yeah. You know, the audition is all on you. You talk about beats. I know what they are. Maybe some of the people are not sure. How would you define a beat? Well, a beat... Uh, I don't know if any of this is true, but Stanislavski is the person I think who's credited with coming up with the the, the term beat, and and I don't know if this is true at all or not, or just a, a wives' tale. But uh, but what he meant was a bit, a little bit, but because he had an accent, <laughs> they said it was a beat, a little beat. Uh, but it works rhythmically. It works the term beat, and it's like. Uh, Usually it's a line, two lines, three lines, maybe even two or three exchanges where something specific is happening. You know, um, if the scene was, uh, like we said before, you come in. So the first beat would be, I open the door, I greet you, and I, I'm either going to reject you or invite you in. Uh, so the first beat is, hey, hey, you're here. Great. Thanks for showing up. Come on. That's a beat, and then we walk in, and, and the next beat happens, and the next beat happens. So something has to change. Right. There has to be a change in either some, uh, the, the, a change in the direction of the scene. It can be a subtle change. Uh, would you like some coffee? Sit down, sit down, sit down. I'll, get, I'll make you coffee. Or, uh, and then you say, I have to tell you, your father died. That's a big change. That's a big beat, <laughs> you know. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's essentially, it's whatever happens between the shifts are the beats. Beautiful. Beautifully, beautifully put. Very, very clear. Do you read the whole script? Never. Never. I don't even read the script when I'm in it. And why? I don't care about it. It doesn't matter to me. As an actor, uh, I mean, if I'm doing a play, that's different. Uh, because 
Explain that to people because I, I, I know what you're talking about. Well, one of the first things I was ever taught at school was to read the whole play because you need to know what every other character says about you. This is the information you have. That doesn't mean it's true, but that means this guy says you're a jerk. This guy says you're a good guy. Uh, this guy thinks you killed his mom, you know. So that's valuable information for you to have. Um, but it doesn't ultimately affect how I play something. You know, it's, that's, just, that's just what other people say about me. So somewhere along the way, I stopped reading that uh, in film and TV. In play, you're going to read a play because you're in the room anyway. You're going you're gonna to know that play inside out and backwards. It's the blueprint, you know, of, of the structure that you're going to inhabit for a long time, usually, when you're doing a play. But on film, I don't care. I don't care what anybody else says about me. All I care about, most of the time now on film, I barely even know the scene... I don't look at the script the night before. I, I have looked at it at some point. I kind of know what I'm doing. And then when I get there, I look at the scene we're going to shoot first. And I look at that scene. And I drill it. Just so it's all fresh. All the words are there. The intentions are clear. And we go in and shoot it. And then when it's done, I forget about it. Now I look at the next one. And you might do that four or five times a day. You might do that once in a day. Um, but what everyone else is doing in the other scene, I don't care about. That character in that story isn't watching those other scenes. That character might not know the information in the other scenes. He might, but if he, but if he finds out that information, it'll be in a scene. You know, and I'll get that information from somebody and react to it. So, with very few exceptions, I would say I don't read, even when I'm, you know, I mean, that's, that's a cliche of an actor reading a script is like, uh, who cares, who cares, who cares, who cares, my part, who cares, who cares, oh, there's my part, <laughs> you know. Well, I, I like this too, because the difference between stage and screen is that for screen, you are shooting little pieces of It's just each, it's a moment, that's all. You, yeah. you know, and like, uh, the whole picture won't be clear until the editor puts that's it right. together. That's right. You don't even have control ultimately no. of your own performance in that sense because yeah. somebody's going to choose the, the takes that they like the most. Um, where on stage you're entirely uh, responsible for everything yeah. you do. This is great and I hope that it uh, upsets some people to hear this too. Because, <laughs> and the reason that Tony... That, the reason that you have the right to say this is because you are a working actor and your work speaks for itself. Yeah, and, so, and, and what I say, I, and, and I only speak for myself, you know, people, uh, people can disagree and, and that's fine, you know. Uh, it, what works for me doesn't necessarily work for anyone else, but, but it's really worked for me. Now, you've been in an audition and you completely forget what you're supposed to say. Yeah. And what do you do in a case like that? Um, you know, if it happened, I'll, I'll say, okay, uh, let, I'll just uh, try and act it out. So I'm in the middle of a speech, and I forget what I'm saying, and this is what I do. Um, I don't know why you. I don't know why you do this to me all the time. Every single time we. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, just keep rolling. Keep rolling. Okay, give me that last line again. And then, and then continue. If I do that two or three times, I know I'm screwed, and yeah. I know I'm not going to get the part. So then I just try to suck up all the dignity I can, and uh, and they say, "Cut." Would you do you want to try it again? I'm like, "No, it's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time," and leave like a professional. You know what I like about that? Because a lot of beginning actors who make the mistake of when they forget the line, they feel so bad about it that they stop and they apologize you don't apologize in fact what you just showed me is that you continued to take control you said okay could you give me that line again yeah fabulous yeah i once did a a, a, a terrible movie with uh, harry dean stanton oh. and well we were sh first we were shooting my side of the scene 
and then we shot his side of the scene. And when we shot my side of the scene, I was great. And for some reason, when we shot his side of the scene, I kept screwing up the lines. And I'm not even on camera, but I'm giving him all his cue lines. And, you know, like two or three times, but it was Harry Dean Stanton and I was like 20 something and I was trembling. And after they called cut, okay, we got it. I went over to him and said, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. I just kind of, and he looked at me with disgust and he said, don't ever apologize to another actor. Wow. And I remembered that. Wow. And, uh, and that's it. I mean, what does that accomplish? The other actor knows you're doing the best you can. He knows you don't, you're not trying to screw up. It happens. It's happened to him. It happens to you. It's going to happen to everybody. At an audition, it just makes you look... I mean, A, clearly if it happens, you're not prepared. It's that simple. I didn't do my job today. I don't deserve this job. You know, I don't deserve to be hired for this job. So... You tried, to, you tried to sneak one out, you tried to cut some corners, you screwed up. That's a lesson for me. That's not any, something anybody else needs to absolve me of or forgive me for. They just need to forget it and move on to the next person. And I need to forget it and move on to the next audition and, and remember the lesson of how terrible and embarrassing and humiliating it is to be in that position and and piss it away. That's a great attitude, man. I love that answer, man. So, a little bit about, we're going to continue to talk as if you're doing live auditions. Eventually, people will be doing live auditions again. Yeah. When you get there and you go into the waiting room, mm -hmm. do you have a strategy for dealing with the waiting room? You know, I, I, as I said, like, I'm a completely relaxed, uh, I like the waiting room because it's, it's my social scene, you know? That's where I'm gonna see guys that I know, that I've, that, that I've been seeing for now 30 years. Hey, how are you? How are your kids? Oh shit, I heard you broke up. Oh, sorry about your mom, whatever. Um, but some actors don't like to talk and some actors like to be left alone. And some actors will come in and fuck with you. Yes. Uh, you can't fuck with me. <laughs> I mean, if I sense that somebody's trying to do that, uh, I'll embarrass them in front of the whole room. It 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 almost never really hap happens at all. But uh, you know, somebody be like, oh, whatever, whatever. Be like, ah, I I I heard you weren't even acting anymore. I heard you just gave up. <laughs> what are you even doing here? Or I heard you died. When was the last time you got booked on something? <laughs> you know, to fuck with me, I'll fuck right back with you. But, uh, or, or a guy like Jason Blicker, who is a fantastic actor. He is in the zone. You know, yeah. he goes into this zone and he's preparing and whatever he's doing, I respect it. Like, I don't go over to him and be like, hey, buddy, I'm going to break your bubble. It's just like, I say, hey, Jason, he'll be like, hey, Tom, hey, Tom. After the audition, we'll probably catch up. Right. But before the audition... He's in a space where he's preparing the way he prepares. And I just, you know, I have nothing but regard for the guy and respect for the guy. And I would never, and, and I would say to anyone watching, don't ever bother somebody. They're preparing to go in and do their job. Right. You know, you wouldn't go up to a surgeon and slap his hand. You're like, hey, how are you feeling good today? You feel like you might uh, not kill the guy? <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe you should wait outside, you know? Now, when you actually get called into the room for yeah. the audition, yeah. what would you say are do's and don'ts? Um, well, philosophically, don't go in trying to give them what you think they want. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, go in and do what you do. Go in and do what you want to do. Wasn't that great? I can hear you all screaming yes. I'm sure that you got a lot out of this. And I would love for you to share your biggest takeaway in the comments below. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, give this a thumbs up. I'm going to put a link below to the site where you can learn everything about 
my latest online course, Self Taping Mastery. And just check it out. See if it's for you. If it isn't, that's great. If it is, greater. And I will see you in the next video.